Hey guys, happy Friday and welcome back to another Stripe Show podcast happy hour edition. It is Friday, October 8th. Brought to you by Encore Golf. As always, Encore designs high performance golf balls for players of all skill levels and swing speed. So get fit for your perfect golf ball today at EncoreGolf.com. Well, I'm coming at you live if you're watching on YouTube um, from a little bit of a different setting today. I'm on the rooftop of the Starbucks Reserve in Chicago, Illinois, which if you haven't been to a Starbucks Reserve yet, this is um, one of the world's largest Starbucks. It's like five stories. I'm up here on the rooftop. Um, some really cool coffee if you're into really cool um, and kind of bougie coffee like I am. Um, really having a good, a good time here in Chicago and a little bit of a vacation. But of course, had to get you caught up with what's going on in the news uh, of golf this week. Um, and then we have a Corn Ferry Tour uh, interview coming up, which is a really, really great one with Taylor Pendrith, um, who led the Corn Ferry Tour last year in dr all the driving stats. So coming off of obviously long drive week last week um, and then into another PGA Tour event this week, it's, uh, it was really great to talk with, with, uh, with Taylor. Um, on the pod this week, uh, Travis had some great guests. Froggy had an awesome guest as well. But I would really encourage you guys to listen to Thursday's episode, if you haven't yet, which is Brad Pullen, Sam Burns' his longtime coach. Uh, Sam won last week at Sanderson Farms, playing again well this week. Um, speaking of the PGA Tour this week, we've got the Shriners Children's Open in Las Vegas. Sung Kang opened with a 10 under 61. Um, so that's, that was kind of the highlight, um, of the day yesterday, Taylor Pendrith, who we will hear from here in just a minute, shot a nice little 65 in the first round. So you love to see it. I'm not saying it was us here on the stripe show, but it might've been. Um, so as you guys know, we are inter interviewing all of the corn Ferry tour graduates that go up into the PGA tour this year. This week, we have Taylor Pendrith, who graduated number five on the Corn Ferry Tour list. Um, he's playing in his third event this week at the Shriners as an official PGA Tour member. And like I said, so far, he's doing all right. But I wanted, um, really excited for you guys to hear this interview because I think you're really going to love it. Um, and he's a really great guy on and off the golf course. We had a really good chat. And uh, we're getting to know number five, Taylor Pendrith. And here's a little bit more about him now. And Taylor Pendra, thanks for joining me. How are you today? I'm doing good, Samantha. Thanks for having me. Of course, you're in Vegas right now from your hotel room, I assume, preparing for the Shriners Open this week. As we're recording this on Wednesday, this will drop on Friday, the day before the first round today, Wednesday. How do you like the course so far? It's it's really good. Yeah, I uh, it's been kind of a weird week. I, I literally got into the field when I was hitting my approach shot into 18 yesterday in the practice round. So I was first alternate, uh, which was kind of an interesting position I've never been in before. But um, yeah, got into the field and uh, golf course is great. It's uh, in awesome shape and um, suits my game pretty good. So looking forward to it. How does that work for the viewers who don't know how that works when technically you are a full PGA Tour member, but that doesn't mean you get into every single event? Yeah, it's it's pretty complicated because there's a bunch of different categories, but um, basically our Corn Ferry Tour category, there's 50 of us in that. Um, and I believe I'm number 10 out of 50 on the priority rankings. So uh, lots of guys are playing this week who are ahead of us and uh, the CJ Cups next week also in Vegas. So um, a lot of the big boys are here, and um, so it just happened that I was, I believe I was two or three out to, to when I was traveling here, and then there were some top tens from the previous week that bumped me back further, And uh, but yeah, ultimately I moved up and I uh, got the phone call yesterday, and so I'm happy to have a tea time, and um, yeah, going to get ready for the week. Well, you are in Vegas. Do you gamble at all? Uh, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. I haven't been yet this week, but um, I do enjoy it. What's your game of choice? I'm a big blackjack player. Travis likes craps. Yeah, um, I've only played craps like once or twice, probably. I, I don't really know exactly how to play, but I just kind of been following around the, the buddies who I've played with. But yeah, blackjack's probably my game. Travis was talking yesterday about who he thinks would be the most fun PGA Tour player at the craps table for some reason. He said Patrick Reed. 
I think that's the worst answer of all time. But if you're at the blackjack table and you want to take one PGA Tour player to sit there with you and run the table, who would it be? Uh, hmm. Jeez, I don't know. Maybe Pat Perez. I don't know. He seems like kind of a fun guy, likes to have a good time. So I don't know him at all. Never met him, but he would probably be pretty fun there. That's a great answer. I didn't even think about that. Um, but we'll, we can get back to golf. I went on a tangent there. But this is your third event in a row, right? Um, se- second event in a row. We played We played Napa and then had a week off. Um, and then was in Mississippi last week for Sanderson Farms. And then um, this week here in Vegas. So, uh, yeah, third event as a member, second in a row. So um, How does it we've got to finally be out there in the big leagues? Yeah, it's great. It's, um, you know, it's been kind of a lifelong, I guess, goal of mine. And uh, I've got a taste of it the last, I guess, year and a half with the Corn Ferry Tour giving the top 10 guys the alternate field events, which was awesome. So um, have had a little bit of experience and have played decent in those alternate field events last year. So um, it's just it's great to to be a full time member um, where your results actually count for for FedEx Cup points and um, so it's a, it's, you know, it's a new experience for me. I've never been a PJ tour member before, but it's, it's been super fun so far and, uh, it's going to be a long season, but, uh, it's just, it's great to be out here finally. Well, you had two very respectable finishes for your first two tour events as a member T36 at the Fortinet and T39 at Sanderson farms. Talk to me about your preparation and for this season, is it any different? Do you look at these events any differently than you did the corn Ferry tour last year? You know, I think I think it's um, you know I just got to keep doing more of the same stuff that I have been doing. You know, obviously the the things that I've been working on and and my preparation has been working in the past few years. I've been playing some really nice golf, um, obviously on a lower level, but um, just gonna try and keep things very similar and try and stay in the same routines. And um, you know, at the end of the day, it's a golf tournament. It's you know, obviously the PGA Tour is the best tour in the world, um, but just going to try and prepare like I have, you know, the past couple of years and, and uh, go about my business and uh, play some good golf and, and see uh, where that gets me. Keeping it simple is always a good, uh, good strategy in golf. I used to remember my parents used to tell me I played in college, but I'm washed up now. They used to say boring golf is good golf. If you could just pars are fine. <laughs> boring, boring golf is good golf. So back to those corn fairy tour days, obviously this wasn't that long ago, just a couple months ago, but it was an interesting year a very long year um, for you guys, the wraparound season due to COVID. And there are a few questions I want to ask around that. But first, describe what the season was like overall, besides long. We know that. But how was it in your own words? Uh, yeah, it was very interesting. I mean, we we had a big break um, in March, I believe, when COVID first uh, came about. And that actually really helped me. I was kind of battling a little bit of a shoulder injury and was able to take some time off to rehab that and and get feeling better and I had just come off a horrible result in Mexico and um, so I was I was kind of glad for the the break and you know obviously I'm not glad for COVID because it's messed everything up in the world but um, it was kind of nice to have you know the two two and a half months off to kind of rest and recover and then it was you know a super season so you basically I played as many events as I felt I could in a row and, and uh, had some nice finishes and kind of got on a run there in the midsummer. Um, didn't get a win, but uh, had a lot of really solid finishes and put myself in contention a lot. But uh, it was it was kind of crazy, you know, off the golf course as well. Um, got engaged and uh, hadn't didn't see my fiance in for seven months, seven or eight months. So it was kind of crazy. She was um, up in Canada and a nurse, so she's been busy and her own profession but um yeah so that was that was kind of a battle we haven't really had to go through that uh, much and you know even if we wanted to see each other it was just not possible because of the the canadian border rules are super strict and um yeah it was a mess but uh on the golf side it was great uh, i was able to focus you know i guess strictly on golf and um had a really solid year so um but yeah it was a very long very long year Very long that when I've talked to these other players, we talk a lot about consistency because that is was the key to it for playing so good for such a long period of time. But obviously you finished fifth in the standings, more than enough points to secure that card, included four runner up finishes. Like you said, put yourself in contention a lot. 
but was there a little bit of a sigh of relief when, I don't want to say that physical card was handed to you, but when you finally were able to say, you know, I made it. Totally. Yeah. They, you know, I think looking back, I had, I had had enough points like at the end of the first season to officially lock it up, but they, they didn't announce it until I think it was in Dallas and it was just kind of a weird timing because I, I had just three putted the last hole and I, I was all pissed off because I made three putted for par and was in a good position. And um, they told me that I've officially um, passed the threshold of points to secure my tour card. So that was, that was great. And got a bunch of messages asking me if I was celebrating and all that. And I, it was kind of a weird feeling. Cause I was like, well, no, not really. Cause you know, I, I, I knew that I was going to be in the top 25 basically at the start of the year of the second season, I guess. But so to finally get that card in my hand, that was it was an awesome feeling. It was a great night. Um, my fiance was there. My caddy Mitch, who's my good buddy, was there, and uh, we had a really good time. But to to finally hold that card was a, an amazing feeling. Especially after I read that you know you had a lot of injuries in the past couple of years, even dropping back down to the McKenzie Tour. Talk to me about that. Your palm, your wrist, your shoulder. Hopefully, it wasn't all in the same arm. No, there were right right arm left arm left hand uh left shoulder yeah it's you know been kind of a battle the last i guess four or five years i got corn ferry tour status in 2016 after finishing third on the mckenzie tour and um thought everything was going to be smooth sailing from there and uh, finished fourth in my second event on on the corn ferry tour that year and you know thought i was in a good spot and <clears throat> ultimately battled some injuries for the next i guess three years and had to drop down to lost my status on the corn ferry tour um played a few events and like i think 17 then was starting to feel a little bit better in 18 and then 19 played mckenzie tour and finished second and um had two wins so um you know i i guess it's uh, i had to change a lot of things the way that i practiced the um you know just to kind of look look out for my body a little bit better make sure i didn't get hurt again but um it's been great the last you know two years so it's uh it's been a, a long journey and uh, up and down for me for sure but um to finally get here is great and uh yeah hoping to stay healthy talking about those changes to your practice and i'm sure even to your swing travis is an instructor as you know who hosts this podcast monday through thursday i take over on fridays we do like to talk a little bit of golf swing so when your swing feels off What's going on for you? What do you always have? What's that one thing you have to go back to, to remember, to kind of get back on track? Um, well, I, first of all, I would say I'm, I'm a, a, a field player for sure. I have probably only looked at my swing on video. I mean, not many times, maybe 10 times. I rarely, you know, look at my swing on video. So, um, what I like to see with when I'm hitting driver, you know, driver's probably the best club for me. Um, I like to be swinging left. So I like to see the ball drop right. That's been a change in the past couple of years. Yes, I used to hit big draws with everything and still like to draw the irons, but the driver, I like to see it fall right when I'm driving it really well. So if I'm hitting it left, I know my club path is probably too far from the inside and I'm getting stuck and it's either a block or a, or a big draw. So I like to just make sure that, you know, I'm uh, swinging left a little bit, ball starting left and fading to the right with the driver but yeah i mean i uh i work with derek ingram and he's he's been great over the years but i basically was self-taught my whole life i didn't have a lesson until i was 18 i think so my swing's kind of homemade but uh derek's been able to work with me within my swing and uh, made it a lot more consistent over the years so well, speaking of driver, I'm glad you brought that up because you were the longest driver on the Corn Ferry Tour, led, led uh, the, all the driving stats. Um, we had the long drive competition last week. We talked a lot about that on the pod, and we talked to some instructors about how to hit it longer but still straighter. Um, this is a lot of average golfers to listen to this podcast. Let's put it that way. They're not tour players. Um, what's one thing you would tell the guy who plays every Saturday and Sunday on what to do to get longer off the tee. Well, I would say um, they could probably practice hitting some drivers, just lifting that left foot off the ground a little bit. Um, I noticed that. I mean, if you watch the the long drive guys, they, I mean, they, their footwork is insane. They uh, on the backswing, their their toe or 
where their their left heel is off the ground significantly, um, and that's kind of a power move there. But I would say I do that a little bit too, especially when I'm trying to really go at one. My left foot kind of gets um, off the ground. Um, another thing is get those hands really high and uh, to create a little bit of lag, and I have a lot of lag in my swing, um, and a lot of those long drive guys have tons of lag. I mean, their, their swings are some of them are, are really good golf swings. Some of them are, don't look that good, but are very powerful. And, um, so I would say those are probably the two tips I have to get the hands high and get, get the left heel off the ground a little bit. The number one topic, I feel like we talk about it on every single podcast and I don't even want to ask you about it, but I have to, obviously Bryson DeChambeau is changing or trying to change the game when it comes to length. You know, he's playing and he's doing these long drive competitions now. Um, and contrary to popular belief, a lot of average golfers out there, he is pretty straight. Yes, he does hit it long, but he also hits it pretty straight for the distance that he's hitting it. What is that like for you watching that um, coming into the PGA Tour and knowing that there's a guy like Bryson who, you know, you can you can compete with that distance-wise? Yeah, I mean, well, number one, he hits it very far, very straight. He's also one of the best putters on tour, so it's a pretty nice combo. But, um yeah, I mean, the speed that he's able to generate is is pretty crazy. I think I was watching a little bit of the long drive um, streaming on YouTube. Even 219 ball speed, that's, I mean, that's fast. I think the most I've ever had was like 195 with a normal driver. I think he's got like 205 or 207 with a normal driver. So that's really fast. And that's just happened, you know, in the last year, basically, from his training and um, all the speed drills that he does. But it's it's pretty cool to see somebody pick up all that speed in such a short amount of time. Um, I think that's where the game's going. You know, lots of guys out here hit it far. Tons of guys on the Corn Ferry Tour are, are bombing it. Um, and it's all about controlling that, I guess, uh, if you can hit the fairways and hit it 350, um, it's definitely an advantage. So, um, but, you know, obviously you got to have all the other aspects of your game well tuned. And, and he's one of the best putters out here. So that's why he's succeeding so well. That's one of the things that uh, Travis talks about a lot. He's like, I want to see Bryson hitting wedges, like 60 to 100 yard wedges. I don't want to see him hitting any more drivers. <laughs> Get on the range with your wedges. And that's just something yeah. that you make a good point. Like, yeah, he can putt. Yeah, he can drive it. But it's that middle shot for him that's keeping him from being the best player in the world. I feel like he's got everything else. Yeah, totally. He's got everything else. Um you know, I haven't played with Bryson. I think I played a practice round with him when I was like 17. Obviously, he's changed since then and, uh, you know, one of the best players in the world. But, um, you know, you look at DJ, how good he was with his wedges, you know, when he was number one in the world. And he just got so dialed in with those wedges and he also hits it far. So I think that's why he has been dominating for the last few years. And um, that's something that I look to, to strive towards to, to be a better wedge player. Um, obviously you got to still practice the strengths and, and drive it well. Um, but when I'm driving it well, I have lots of wedges in. So if I can get a little bit better with that, a little bit better with the putter, then hopefully have some good results. But yeah, it's uh, golf's an all around game and you got to be, got to be on with everything to win. So lots of different aspects to this crazy game, but Hey, as you know, we're doing this series, getting to know everyone on the corn Ferry tour who graduated. So we've got rapid fire questions. They're the same list for everyone that we're interviewing for this series so just answer with the first thing that comes to your mind okay all right all right biggest thing you're excited about on the pga tour this year um probably playing the canadian open if it happens hopefully it okay. happens best golf tip for the weekend golfer can be anything uh, oh geez um get your speed on your putts right. I don't know. That's a good answer though, because I do feel like people will go out without practicing putting and it's like, how do you expect to play well? Um, yeah. Top top three players you're most excited to play with on tour. Uh, Dustin Johnson, maybe Bryson and um, Tiger if he comes back. So far, everyone has said Tiger. So everyone's a little bit optimistic like you. Yeah. Um, who or what motivates you? Um, I, 
I would say maybe my family and friends motivate me. Uh, especially the last couple of years, I haven't seen anybody. It's been crazy and um, they're all pulling for me in a different country. And so we're just relying on texts and FaceTime, but they're all rooting for me. Um, so I want to perform well for them so they can have something to cheer about back home above the border. Love that. Three, three words to best describe you as a person. Oh, geez. Uh, I'm not very good describing myself. I, okay. Um, I'd say fun, laid back, and uh, easy going. What about three words to best describe your golf game? Um, powerful, streaky, <laughs> and uh, and um, and interesting. I like to keep it interesting out there. That works. Passions that aren't golf related. Any hobbies? Um, hockey, probably number one. I like enjoy following it. Toronto Maple Leafs are my team and played my whole life. And um, my cat, he's a hockey player. He played pro hockey for a bit. So we're always, if we're rooming together on the road, we're watching hockey. So that's uh, probably my number one other passion. If you weren't a golfer, what would you be doing? Is it hockey? <laughs> well, I think every Canadian grows up dreaming of being an NHL player. So um, that was also my dream when I was a little kid. So, yes. Top three favorite courses you've ever played? <clears throat> um, Mirfield Village, Pine Valley, and Riviera. Love the Pine Valley answer. I love that one. Best advice yeah. you were ever told? Um, hmm. uh, if you think you can or if you think you can't, you're right. That's a good one. That's a good one. And then <laughs> their last question, your most memorable golf shot to this day? Hmm. I would say probably, I would say probably the two foot tap in that I had in Edmonton to win my first professional um, event on the McKenzie tour. That was pretty memorable for me. I'd been really close in the past, lots of seconds and lost in a few playoffs. Um, so to get that first win and, um, you know, really, I guess, tell myself that I can win. It was great. Um, and then I followed that up with another one a few weeks later, but that to get that first one was, was pretty memorable for me. A two footer. I think my hands would be shaking so hard. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy well. how you, yeah. When you watch those guys have those two and three footers to win, they don't look like they're nervous at all. <laughs> I guess that comes, I've, I've definitely failed in the past and in, in, in previous years and kind of learned from that. And, um, I feel like when I'm under a pressure situation, I, I like to go faster rather than slower just to eliminate the thinking and um and just kind of get up step up and whack it in the hole so that only was that was a memorable one yeah only thing you can do for that is just put yourself in that situation over and over again because doing it on the practice screen is not even close to the same but thanks for sure. taylor for joining us i love chatting with you and getting to know you on and off the golf course and great luck this week in vegas i really appreciate you taking time to chat with us yeah awesome thanks samantha thanks for having me